I'm Lee from the Oshkosh Beer Blog. I'm Adam from McDang Carlson Wines. And we're back where we started. On location, the original location. The original location, back at Gardena's in the retail section, in front of the beer coolers, where, where we belong. Be. Yeah. <laughs> what are we drinking, Adam? Uh, this is uh, Distill's Wild Sour Series Berliner Weiss Beer, uh, which is a, uh, a tart uh, German-style wheat ale. And and you have it on tap here? Yeah, absolutely. So and do. you also yeah. have it in cans here yep. in, the, in the coolers. Okay. Yep. So this is a, a wheat-based ale that's fermented with lactobacillus yeah. and wild yeast. Yeah, I don't a, know if it's their own proprietary strain. I would, I would assume so. They've got, uh, well, they've got a sour program that we'll talk about in a little while. But, okay. And uh, Britannomyces, which... It's a beautiful a, uh, straw-colored beer. Yeah. You can see the, uh, the huge amount of uh, carbonation yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So one of my favorite anecdotes about this beer is that um, Napoleon and his uh, French invaders uh, referred to this beer as the champagne of the north because the, the golden uh, hue and then the uh, great great effervescence. Yeah. And I mean, it's a very old style of beer. I mean, this was from the 1500s, you know. Yeah. So I mean, we think about all these crazy beers we're getting now. These crazy beers have always been around. People have yeah. always been doing this stuff. Yeah. And I think, I think you'd say that the, the, the goes, goes a... Uh, German style sour ale is, is just as kind of yeah. old, old fashioned as this is as well and having a, a renaissance. Pretty pretty uh, citrusy uh, lemon lemony on the aroma. Yeah, I get a lot of like uh, almost like a lemon zest, but there's a some funk there too. There's yeah. like this oh, undercurrent. Like of, a uh, grassy or yeah. barnyard. Barnyard I get kind of. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> that is a tart, tart beer. And wow. oh, so they, they're saying, you know, this wild yeast strain they're using along with lactobacillus. Yeah. I think the wild yeast strain is dominant. I, so so <laughs> is, is that like pediococcus, would you say, or is that? I don't know what it is. I don't know what they're actually, I, I don't get so much of a Britannomyces kind of thing out of well, it. Well, that, that always comes across to me as just like, you know, subtle funk. Yeah. Or sometimes not so subtle, but uh, no, that, you get a, Big time sour, but with the with the lacto, usually you get kind of like I always get like a milky yeah dairy there. dairy yeah. you know yogurt and kind of this is just Greek yogurt straight up yeah tart puckering yeah no this is a sour beer and and there are many you know many breweries because this is a hot style right now are making a Berliner Weiss and this has got to be one of the most sour that I have tasted by far yeah. which which is I like that personally I do too it's kind of exhilarating yeah you know, it, it like, really is nice palate refreshing. And it goes like right to the like the back of your mouth. It just shoots back there. Yeah. No, and actually, but in addition to lemon and lime, I get I get really a nice pear, uh, yeah, kind of stone stone fruit almost as well, like Green ne apple. nectarine or peach. Th there's a lot happening here. Mm -hmm. I mean, for it's very light bodied. You know, well, that's the amazing refreshing. thing is that you got that complexity of flavor at, at the low uh, right. alcohol percentage. And what did you say this was? Three percent, three percent, and uh, four uh, international bitterness units. So yeah, so somebody <laughs> just put some hops in yeah, the pocket couple, and walked by. Uh, it, yeah. A sprinkle, yeah. <laughs> but absolutely, but really a fantastic beer, and you know, this look, is, this is a beer that, to me that like screams for like a stinky cheese. Absolutely, know, like a good yeah. Blue cheese, it's kind yeah. of ripe. I, I can see a lot of foods at this, like fatty pork, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, shrimp. Any kind of seafood, mussels. Yeah, but very, very refreshing. Getting back to, so I just go off on a tangent here. We were talking about like how old this style is, and you know, Napoleon and all that. In Oshkosh, this was once a very popular style of beer. There were two for sure, and probably three breweries in Oshkosh that made Berliner Weisses. And the most popular was the Oshkosh Brewing Company. They started brewing it in either 1898 or 1899, in the early 1900s, it was one of the most popular styles of beer that they, that uh, brewery made. It's surprising, you think, you know... Well, it's not a, you know, to us anyway, it's not a mainstream style of beer. It's no. not, you know, light, you know, inoffensive lager. I mean, there are definitely, this is going to be a polarizing beer for people, for sure. People are going to love it or hate it, probably. So. I've had, uh, last fall, um, we were in Germany, we were in Berlin, and I had uh, several Berliner <laughs> Weisses there. Yeah. Um, and they tend to put uh, syrups into it, so the raspberry syrup or one called Woodruff, which is kind of sweet and yeah, herby, herbally. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, at one point, I ordered one without the syrup. Yeah. And the guy 
<laughs> you know, I don't speak German very well. He, I, he had a hard time understanding what I wanted. You yeah, know, nobody yeah. drinks it that way. Well, that's funny. I mean, we're, we we want the sourness now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I saw they also, in some cases, blended it with like a pilsner or pale pale lager to, I, to cut down the sour factor, but. And the the, the Berliner Weiss I had there was nowhere approaching this. Yeah, and I saw I saw that only there are only a couple of breweries left that are brewing Berliner Weisses now. I think at one point, I mean, by 1970, this style had just died, died yeah, completely. Yeah. And at one at like at that point in Berlin, there were only two left that were brewing it. I yeah. think there is still only two left in Berlin, although they're getting their own kind of craft beer movement. So I'd imagine other people are picking yeah. up on it. Well, speaking of that, I saw Stone Stone Brewing Company opened a beer garden in, I believe, Berlin, which is kind of a unique crossover where things are kind of moving. So they're going to be uh, drinking IPAs now. Yeah, but yeah, big I have a West, hard time West Coast that. IPAs, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is excellent, though. Yeah. So this weekend, you are going to uh, Great Taste of the Midwest. Great Taste of the Midwest. You're the, one of the lucky ones who got the, tickets. Yep, the preeminent uh, Midwest beer festival, I would say. I mean, it's <laughs> So I imagine all day long you'll be seeking out session beers such as this. Yeah, you know, anything light, refreshing, it's going to be a warm day, I'm sure. No, it's, yeah, you are it's, it's, all, about, it's <laughs> all about the big, the big beers, high-gravity beers. So when you go, how many times have you been to this? Uh, this will be my third year. So going. when you go, do you, I mean, this is an incredible beer festival. Do you, like, uh, chart your course before you get there? Or do you um, try to so they, they release a, um, a hand, handbook with all the breweries that are listed with all the beers that we'll be bringing beforehand. And you do your best to kind of create a, a route of what you'd like to hit. But honestly, it's it's so much of a kind of a sensor, sensory overload situation that uh, you just kind of, you stagger in there and you just kind of, and everywhere you, you turn, <laughs> yeah, 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 no, I, I can definitely uh, attest to that. Right. Well, I hope you have a great time. Yeah, yeah it's, it's fantastic. If you have the opportunity to ever go, take it. Absolutely take it. All right. Well, bro, cheers, Lee.